compute. Good morning. This is uh, good, morning. good morning, Olga. This is Pushing Boundaries, a podcast about pioneering research, breakthrough discoveries, and unconventional ideas. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas R. Verney. My guest today is Olga Guni from Athens, uh, Greece, of course. Olga is a researcher, psychotherapist, educator, and author of Soul Days, Welcome, Once Upon a Time in Embryoland, which is a children's book. Also, The History of Prenatal Psychology. She is co-editor and chapter contributor of Prenatal Psychology 100 Years and 15 or more papers in various journals. Once Upon a Time in Embryoland, an adventure story for young children age eight to 108, that's the title. <laughs> He's also founder of Cosmo Analexis, the organization that offers postgraduate and professional education in prenatal and life sciences globally. She's founder of the International Journal of Prenatal and Life Sciences Academic, open access journal, and a founding member of the Prenatal Sciences Research Institute, SOFIA. She has designed the Health Advancement Program, Welcome, to work with pregnant couples focusing on the well being of the unborn child. Her main interest is connecting the academic world with the community, designing and implementing services that promote human consciousness, evolution, well being and peace. I'm coming almost to the end now. Hang in there. Olga introduced prenatal psychology to Greece and taught it at the Kapodistrian University School of Philosophy, Department of Experimental Pedagogy. She organized the first Pan-European Congress in Athens at the campus of the Kapodistrian University in 2004. I think I attended that. Did I not, Olga? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. A very successful one with delegates from many European countries. And uh, now she is the prime organizer of the Prenatal Sciences Global Congress, which will take place in October uh, by Zoom, I suppose. Have I got that more or less correct, Olga? Any mistake? Very correct. Okay. Very correct, Thomas. Thank you very much for uh, uh, speaking so broadly about this. In a very short, I have always been very curious to learn what is going on. Why is this going on? So that uh, is uh, what I have been doing all these years, uh, more than uh, half a century now, 64 years in life. Uh, I've been trying to find uh, answers to interesting questions and share it uh, with people in whatever way, sometimes a book, sometimes a talk, a module, a paper, or a talk like the one we are having now. Excellent, thank you. So tell me about this Congress, the Prenatal Sciences Global Congress. Um, what, what made you think of it and, uh, and how is it coming along? Yeah, uh, actually uh, it uh, goes back a couple of years and uh, even more years, perhaps a decade, I've been thinking of something needs to be done in order to bring people together. I have been in the field of prenatal psychology for about 30 years now. And I have met so important pioneers. I have learned from each one of them, you being one of them. And uh, I was wondering why are we so segregated, so divided, one in the States, some in uh, Europe, another in Canada, some other in Australia, but why are not we together? This is missing. So uh, 
two years ago, it started to become a little bit more mature. And it was then when I, I asked you, is it time for this Congress uh, to take place? Uh, knowing and respecting, honoring your spirit. So this Congress is the result of the empowerment of uh, you, Janus, John, other pioneers in the field who have dedicated all your lives in this understanding and an effort to bring more unity among different mentors, academicians, professionals, researchers, etc. I still feel so pain, so much pain when I hear professionals saying things against the, the researchers, the academia, or the academia not uh, um, taking into account the work of other scientists, this fight between scientists and uh, uh, users, uh, plain people this has to stop so this is a an effort in this direction bringing together creating uh, or smoothening the the ground so that uh, more voices can join their understandings minds and hearts getting together so that we can decipher more of the dynamics of how our life begins and how this can lead to more health, more peace, more happiness for people. That's, that's wonderful. Sounds great. So how many speakers do you have at the moment? How many speakers are going to participate? There are more than 126 speakers. Can you imagine, Thomas? Speakers. 126 minimum, because there will be uh, some extra because they have uh, taken part in the writing and creation of the presentation, but only one will present for uh, both of them. So I'm speaking about actually the presenters, 126 from all continents, which means that there will be a variety because uh, it's a different cultural background, a different philosophical or uh, uh, scientific background and means that each of these speakers brings to the Congress and from different disciplines, all coming together and casting light to the same theme. So I understand, and how many, how many participants, just regular people who are not speaking, how many are signed up at the moment? At the moment, as attendees, we have 350 people and there are uh, two more. Uh, we have uh, September and the rest of August uh, and the registration is still open and there are more and more people joining in. We hope that there will be at least they have uh, double, if not a triple, the number that uh, has now registered. And can you just uh, tell our viewers and listeners uh, where they can go to register? Yes, they can go to our website, uh, three W's and uh, prenatal sciences partnership dot org where they will find all the information. The registration process is very easy. I have to tell you that because we work as volunteers, all people are volunteers, uh, we have tried to keep registration rates very, very low so that uh, there will be no excuse money excuse uh, for people not to, to attend and uh, uh, it is 190 regular registration for four days which is nothing and this is only for countries a group a which are the rich quotation mark countries while 
half this amount lower than this amount is uh, for country group uh, B and C, students uh, and people who may not be able to pay even that, please send an email to me, explain the reason, and we have all decided. If there is a person who cares, we want him to be there. Right, okay, that's great. And, and I will mention it again at the, end of the, at the end of the podcast, okay? Good, good, thank you. I understand you have, uh, each day we'll start with an opening ceremony. Yes, it's a day. First of all, it's a day is dedicated to a specific theme. The, the first day, for example, is uh, uh, prenatal sciences and what we have learned over the hundred years, more now than a hundred years, and how our physical health, our mental health uh, is connected with our primal experience. And the last day is looking at the future and see what we can create, the new questions, and how we can protect and support the sustainability of our planet and human life. So every day we start with something like an inspirational uh, talk connected with a theme and an inspirational artistic event. Uh, Because we do believe that art is part of our existence. Uh, Scientists and artists have keys to understanding more in a, in a more complete way. So we have artistic events and we also have events for children because children are the young generation, the, the new researchers, the new psych- psychiatrists, the new professionals, the new thinkers. So we, we care about them. Uh, starting to see what is going on and learning from them. Now, you yourself, you are an artist also, are you not? Uh, I think that is a gift from my parent. Uh-huh. Yes, I, I think that I, I like uh, art myself and I am a big uh, admirer of uh, art and aesthetics uh, as a philosophy uh, field as well. So I try to do the best in the books I create, in the images I create, the videos I create, my talks, my my environments. I try to be as beautiful as Plato has mentioned that as possible, together with as close to the truth as possible. So what sort of art do you do? Do you paint or draw or what is it that you do? Yeah, well, um, I do painting, uh, visual arts in general, but I've been painting since I remember myself six, seven years old, uh, taking, uh, you know, my painting box and uh, going around in the hills and uh, painting landscape or my poor grandfather and grandmother who uh, pretending to be my, you know, uh, people my, uh, to, port- to make portraits or, uh, um, portraits, mainly portraits. So I'm painting mainly faces and uh, nature. And then later I became interested in ceramics. So I do things with clay and now with tapestry. So I create rags, which uh, are not for use, but they depict a symbolic uh, landscape or uh, uh, archetypical, um, uh, you know, images. So will you be exhibiting some of your own art also? No, not this time, not this time, but uh, uh, no, but uh, very soon uh, I will, uh, Thomas, yes. At the moment, I have so much work to do with the videos and uh, trying to bring the best of the people in the videos uh, 
out or the writers to bring the best of the writer in a way that uh, pays tribute to their work uh, in the books. So uh, still staying on you, uh, was there anything in your own background that you think contributed to your interest in prenatal psychology? Well, I think that all of us uh, in the field that we serve uh, have uh, something in their life which uh, signposted to this direction. And uh, as um, speaking about uh, uh, myself, um, uh, it all started when uh, um, perhaps when I was at school, when uh, I could not think of myself being away from learning. Mm -hmm. And I stayed 17 years, apart from my own intuition, intuition, I stayed 17 years having schools myself. But uh, while I was uh, having my schools and I had a lot of students, at that time, two schools, about 600 students in the schools, uh, I could uh, see people from four or five years old to 50 years old. And I started asking myself, how can I help these people uh, move forward or more easily? So that uh, took me to sociology. And then I met uh, uh, the Turners. And then I said, oh my God, there is something so important there. So I wanted to find out. And uh, it was not easy at that time because uh, when I started communicating in Greece about prenatal things, uh, they sent psychologists, uh, not uh, just plain people. Oh, I have done my, I have had my children, I have, I have had my prenatal screening test. So that was the understanding. So. Uh, later, as I moved and I started learning more and more and more and discovering more about myself, then uh, I found out that uh, during my birth, uh, there was uh, a trauma, which uh, now I am aware of. I'm not sure whether I have uh, finished the, with that, but... Uh, it was, I was born on a New Year's Day, Thomas. What? And on a New Year's Day. Yes. Uh, half an hour after uh, the New Year's Day, uh, 12.30. And I was ready to be born some hours earlier. But uh, the obstetrician was uh, celebrating. Oh. And uh, my mom, decided to wait for him. So he helped me back, uh, waiting for the obstetrician. Of course, now I know that nobody could make me hold back myself. But at that time, for some reason, I also held myself back. And as soon as the obstetrician came, then I was born. But I found that this was uh, perhaps, uh, without perhaps, the reason which uh, sent me into understanding more about uh, the birth trauma and then the gestation trauma and then the conception trauma and then the generational trauma, etc. And uh, I think that this repeated many times in my life as it was triggered again when I brought prenatal psychology in Greece. It was too early for them and I had to wait for the background to be prepared and ready to hear. And that things like that. So. Uh, yes, it is connected with my personal experience in a way. But I have to tell you, Thomas, that uh, 
I have always been interested in astrophysics and uh, hard science, and I've never stopped studying this. And the more I study these hard sciences or the complexity, the more I understand that nothing happens without a, a law, a natural law being in process. So I start watching, observing this life dynamics and Perhaps uh, there is a good reason for all our experiences. And perhaps when we dis discover these laws at work, uh, perhaps we stop speaking about uh, traumas and perhaps we start speaking about something else. What, uh, what would that be? Uh, perhaps uh, something which is at play uh, based on natural laws that bring more evolution and more evolution out of whatever evolution is already there. Uh, so uh, I'm still observing and I'm still studying the field, but I see that uh, magnetism, uh, um, um, <laughs> Uh, inertia, uh, transmutation, all these big laws uh, are at work in our relationships, birth and death, uh, the, the quality of life we live or we don't live, uh, health and disease. So entropy, for example, I'm still looking into the dynamics of entropy and how it appears as a wise law that creates more creation out of chaos. So I, I can hear reverberations of your interest in philosophy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Plato and Aristotle, Aristotle were my good friends since I was 16. At 16, I had already studied uh, most of the works of Plato due to the inspiration of, uh, of our teacher of philosophy at school. Really? So I still remember. Would other students in Greece also at such a young age study Plato and Aristotle? Uh, at my generation, uh, we used to have ancient Greek um, study of the classics uh, for six years. And yes, it was a must and a lot of young people at that age and perhaps the next generation as well had a very good background in uh, ancient Greek classics, um, yeah. Could that also extend to classic uh, Greek plays? Uh, plays, uh, you mean a theater, right? Right, like Oedipus, yeah. things like that. Yeah, well, I still remember with gratitude my teachers. I have to tell you, I had so excellent teachers, all my teachers, even now, excellent. I feel so much gratitude to them. They took us to tragedy or comedies, uh, uh, played in vivo, and then they spend hours explaining the, uh, the, the meaning of this and that, and uh, taking us to the depths of the words. And the concepts, that's why I like concept analysis as a researcher now, because I know that there is so much understanding in the words. The words we speak have got all of the information. So I think that, yes, it was a gift from those people back then and the friends of the same fever that uh, we were together over these decades uh, speaking about uh, these things and exploring more. Yeah. Where, where did you grow up? Where? Like in, 
350 kilometers, more or less, uh, north uh, of Athens in uh, Pilio, one of the mountains uh, that are very beautiful. I'm now there uh, and uh, the place of birth of uh, Hiron Kedavros, uh, uh, centaur, hero, Hiron centaur, the teacher of Asclepios, uh, the son of uh, the, 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 the god of light. Mm. So, yeah. I was born there, a place full of beauty, full of vegetation, very fertile, uh, looking at the sea every day. But uh, when I went to university, I had to move to Athens. And then uh, I am, I've lived in Athens uh, the rest of my life and until now. I believe you married a judge. Am I uh, yeah, uh, you know, um, I studied law as my my bachelor degree, and uh, I met my love of life at that time, who was uh, um, a lawyer and uh, political sciences uh, um, uh, scientist. So we got married, we stayed together. But uh, then uh, we divorced and each one of us uh, followed the separate paths. But uh, I have uh, judges and lawyers all around my space. My sister is a lawyer, my nephew is a lawyer, my cousin is a judge. So law is uh, something I meet and uh, talk about or hear every day. Thanks God I did not become one. Yes, yes, yes. I but I appreciate the way of thinking. I'm so glad that I studied law because there is so much logic. I still remember my impression as a student that uh, law is like mathematics. You have a living situation, a life situation, and you have to analyze it uh, find the working forces and then see what is uh, the real thing happening and uh, what are the connecting uh, lines and how can you heal it so that there is more um, right, more uh, just, uh, better for everybody. Yes, yes, I feel the same way. My father was a lawyer. And yeah. I was thinking of becoming a lawyer, but then I changed my mind and I'm really happy that I didn't. <laughs> I really <laughs> that yeah. I I'm a lawyer because so many lawyers are unhappy people. Yeah, yeah. It is not, uh, uh, um, it is one of the three most important, most stressful jobs uh, yeah. that uh, you, you can have. Certainly in Canada, probably. In Europe too, you have to be very aggressive to be successful. You really have to be aggressive, and you have to sort of try to wipe out the opposition. Yeah, that is a bad thing. Uh, that is something I saved myself from. Do you have any children? Uh, no, but I have raised the three children, Thomas. How so? Uh, my ex-husband uh, had the uh, children, so I raised the children and uh, I was very happy to be with them for uh, the many years that uh, we were together until uh, they grew up uh, and now they have their own children. But uh, I raised the children born by other women and I see no difference. You can love children and uh, share uh, the gifts that motherhood can offer to a human beings, even if you are not a biological mother. Mm, yes, very true, very true. Are your parents still alive? No, uh, my father died uh, when he was 50s, early 50s. Uh, which is uh, very sad because uh, I missed him for many years. I was something like 20, early 20s. And my mom uh, died some uh, 15 years ago. 
Mm. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear. Both of them, very nice people, both of them. Mm. So um, uh, if, if you could have, this is a little different uh, question, but speaking of your parents and how they passed away, makes me think if you could have dinner with any three people, dead or alive, who would it be? Well, uh, certainly uh, my parents would be there, mm -hmm. my parents, and uh, then uh, my, my, my teacher of philosophy would be there, and then a kindergarten teacher, school, school teacher would be there, and uh, my school, uh, um, schoolmate, who we still meet from time to time and we have shared so many things over the years because we were together with Maritza uh, for, um, since we were about 11 mm -hmm. and uh, we stayed together still now. So yeah, these would be the people from my life experience. And uh, if uh, I could have people I had never met, I would very much like uh, to invite Socrates, okay. Aristotle, Plato, so uh, Schopenhauer, and uh, Kant, and these figures uh, that uh, I've uh, been so much interested in their work uh, so that uh, I could see who these people are. And I would like to meet Klimt as well and uh, uh, Van Gogh, so that I can get to know how these brains worked, what was their attitude? Well, Schopenhauer didn't like people too much, and he certainly didn't like women. So I Yeah, that's why it is interesting. I don't know how that meeting would go. <laughs> Uh, I would be very curious myself, but that would be really good understanding for me to see different um, attitudes getting together. Because even Plato and Aristotle had differences. Yes. But how can you honor your own self, but at the same time be together? That is very important for me. How about, how about Chagall? Well, uh, I'm not quite sure that I have understood or known him uh, to that degree so that uh, I can uh, say, ah, I'm so curious to meet. I think I need more time to study mm. this work. Yeah. He's one of my favorites, yeah. Really? Yes, I really like Chagall, yeah. And um, and and um, what what's the name of the Spanish one with the with the big mustache? The Spanish painter. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, the one whose work has a lot of primal elements in his work. Yes, I know who you mean, but uh, yeah, Dali, 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 yeah, Dali. Yes, I yeah. have the Dali Museum in Spain by any chance. If I have ever been in Spain? No, to the Dali Museum in Spain. Yes, yes, I have. Yes, yes. Yeah, and it was really very uh, mind-opening. Mm -hmm. It is, yes. I mean, anything he touched, he turned into art. Yeah. Napkins, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, what, whatever. He just turned it into art. Amazing, amazing man. So coming back you uh i know that you are now totally focused on this huge enterprise this meeting in october uh, but any thoughts about what you're gonna do after it's over after it's finished well i think uh, uh, first of all uh, uh, it is part of what i am doing it's not uh, the a hundred percent of my time and energy uh, but uh, um uh, part of my energy because at the same time I continue and uh, I do the uh, 
publishing work and uh, we are working now on the translation and uh, public publishing your book your last book in greek believing that this will help the greek audiences readers uh, to understand uh, very updated uh, um, knowledge information which is so in significant to, to life. Um, I continue my research work and I work on uh, two projects at the moment. Uh, one is on uh, based on my clinical work, 70 cases, and uh, we work to see the a connection between a specific uh, mental situations and uh, the prenatal narratives of the people, qualitative uh, analysis. And uh, the other is on free birth in terms of um, the legislation in uh, Europe and uh, the States uh, as a term. Uh, then uh, I continue writing my book which is uh, the temporary title Ariadne's Thread, based on my clinical work and how it connects with uh, mythology and uh, the personal narratives of people and uh, seeing my clients uh, every day. So... Clients? What do you see them for? What what sort of approaches do you have? Oh, uh, there are different uh, people come to me not because they know I am a prenatal psychotherapist. They come to me because uh, a friend who worked with me uh, was uh, healthier afterwards. So they come because they have depression, because they have panic attacks, because uh, they have blood sugar, blood pressure, sorry, diabetes, uh, or um, uh, pregnancy. They are in pregnancy, so they wanted to, to do something with uh, their bonding, with their unborn. Uh, so whatever people uh, face as challenge, divorces, uh, bankruptcies, uh, you know, people come to a psychotherapist, you know, very well for a number of reasons. Yes. Yes. What is, what is, what is sort of your most, um, what, what is it that you like the most dealing with in terms of problems that people present? Well, uh, what I really enjoy doing is uh, when I am present, when uh, a pregnant mother and the pregnant father meets and bonds with the unborn child and starts realizing that the baby is already there. And they meet on an equal basis with this curiosity, who are you? Why are you with us? How can we support each other so that we can uh, share the path, become co-walkers uh, towards this path. This is my best uh, moments. Uh, and I really have tears in my uh, unseen eyes when I see the eyes of a newborn, because I know that there is uh, so much power in these uh, newcomers and so much potentiality and so much uh, to do together. Mm, very nice. So what would you say is the most important thing you have learned in your life? The most important thing. Um, uh, first, I've learned not to take no as an answer. That's wonderful. Yes, I love that. Go on. <laughs> yeah. Second, that there are no limits. Mm -hmm. The limits exist only when you think and believe in limits. Mm -hmm. So I am an iconoclast. 
and uh, I break barriers and limits all the time. Even my physical limits, uh, I mean, somatic limits. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the third is there is no wrong. There are no wrong things. Everything has a reason. There is a reason or a logos for everything. And uh, the thing is, are you interested? Am I interested in discovering that logos? Mm -hmm. And four, I've also learned that uh, if you wanted to understand more, you might you need to be willing to learn and stop talking so that you can listen and learn from everything the water flowing in the river the birds the forest another human being everybody is a teacher uh, sometimes when i was much younger uh, I used to, to read about the vast library of nature. And I said, what is this person, McGray, used to, what did he want to say? What is this vast library of nature? But then I started understanding. So... This is what I am trying to remind myself, that I know nothing, that I want and I'm curious to learn something and that there are no limits to this because once you get somewhere, vast skies and open roads open up in front of you. So this takes you to the next the states and the next. There is only one thing I am so sad, Thomas. What's that? What? That life is so short. Yes. Very short. A hundred years is nothing. Uh, the moment you start saying, oh my goodness, now I understand that the A of the alphabet, uh, then death. And uh, I very much, I would very much like to uh, be built as human beings in bodies that could last longer than that. Yeah, I'm with you on that. And of course, I'm a lot closer to, to the end than you are. But anyway, speaking of end, we need to come to an end. I want to say one more time, um, the Global Congress will take place on um, October the 6th to 9th online. And yes. you can you can reach and, and get more uh, information about the Global Congress at, and I will say it slowly, www.prenatalsciencepartnership. That's one word, lowercase, prenatal sciencepartnership.org, O-R-G. And uh, I've been speaking to Olga Guni, who is the prime mover behind this incredible Congress that she's organizing. Um, something like 150 speakers, 350 participants already. Probably, you'll probably have double that number, I would imagine, by October. So I want to thank you for joining us, Olga. It has been totally fascinating. I wish you continued success in all your many, many enterprises, including your art. <laughs> thank uh, you for believing in that, uh, Thomas. I do, I do. And you're just doing such an important work, really. And uh, you know that I support it 100%. Um, I want to mention that my guest next week will be Dr. David Hanscom, prominent spine surgeon, who will speak about how to conquer debilitating chronic pain without surgery. His methods evolved from his intense 15-year experience uh, himself fighting chronic pain. 
So I will have to say goodbye for today, Olga. We shall be in touch, of course. And thank uh, you all for listening. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye.